This trailer is made possible by a generous bestowal from the city of Waterdeep. A full-service city by the sea with an convenient walking distance of endless labyrinths, dusty tombs, and other dungeon-like features for all your adventuring needs. Waterdeep. Splendors over and under the mountain. Our story continues below the ruined warehouse on Candle Lane, where our heroes discover that the tunnel systems play host to more than just natural fissures and crevices. Wait, is it crevices or crevasses? I, I can never figure that out. I mean, the place is probably big enough to support both flavors, so uh, let's go with that. The party is witness to a number of strange temples and shrines devoted to that which endures, a mysterious deity that represents the universal force of entropy. Surviving the confounding traps and devices set in their path, the party stumbles into the parlor of a giant spider, where they discover the remains of one of the two missing City Watch constables, but also lose the alchemist Siebert to the caverns below. Disheartened but determined, the party trudges on and quickly finds a replacement goblin in the form of Gorko. No, I'm not suggesting that goblins are interchangeable. This one is completely different. He even has a different voice actor. Uh, Siebert's fine, he's just taking the long way home. Probably. Gorko explains that he was left behind in the caverns to await the return of his master, a dwarven adventurer named Kerhan, who is seeking to unmake a dangerous relic known as the Orrery of the Wanderer. Agreeing to join the party as a follower, the goblin provides unsteady shortbow shots, moral support, and a bunch of healing potions that he nearly forgot about. Deeper within the caverns, the party's encounters include, but are not limited to, a starving carrion crawler, a room populated by reanimated severed feet, a sewer cesspool occupied by a filthy green tentacle. God, please don't take that out of context. And a lone brass dragon wormling that takes a curious shine to Mave of the Mirror. At last, the party discovers the shrine where Kerhan had taken the orrery, which is now being guarded by a possessed Ava Teach, the only surviving city watchman to descend into the caverns. After a struggle against the mysterious powers of the shrine, it is Jet who finds the smashed orrery, only to discover that little by little, the mechanism is repairing itself, seemingly impervious to destruction. Thinking quickly, Jet scoops up the relic and carries it back to the surface with the bedraggled Sergeant Tish in tow, certain that this orrery won't be a plot device at all. Back at the head office of Acquisitions Incorporated, Omen addresses the matter of mistaken identity, but curiously does not reprimand the party for their actions. The promised gold is paid, along with a generous donation of Scrub for a Scrub coupons. In addition, Omen asks the party to remain in Waterdeep on standby for their next mission, ensuring that this season can continue without the risk of a total party wipe, or ruthless punishment to the fullest extent of Waterdavian law for impersonation. At least for now. Until next week. I mean, who knows, right? Blessed with a chance to catch their breath, the party spends their downtime in Waterdeep to await their next assignment, where Quarry attempts to schmooze with high society with, uh, well, partially violent results. I think she only broke one rib of that random dude that offended her. Maybe two. Zindo makes wholesome connections with the more bribable city guards, securing a minor magical relic that isn't cursed and is actually pretty sweet. Maeve works to rehabilitate the young brass dragon they found in the catacombs, ensuring the little one's safe passage to the temple farm of Goldenfields convincing the population of farmers and priests that a baby fire-breathing dragon would be an excellent crop duster. And she's just so small, she just won't be a problem, no, just look at her, Oh. But for Jet, she uncovers more about the strange orrery they found in the shrine. The orrery is imbued with temporal magic, but seems to be missing several key components, suggesting that if they were to be recovered and reinstalled, the orrery might yet become even more powerful. Yet before too long, the party is summoned once again by Omen and instructed to travel to Phandalin, where an Acquisitions Incorporated franchise has gone dark and worse yet, has missed out on their last monthly payment to head office. Now, charged with the investigation, 
The party gathers their supplies and makes ready to head north on their first business trip. This is the continuing story of the Gallows End Company. <laughs>